So since bullying we know is such an important issue for kids who have disabilities, Julie and I are very passionate about making sure that people understand that bullying can be addressed through the individualized education program. Oh yes, it can, it can. be in the IEP. <laughs> and of course, we want to focus on the specifics of how do you make that happen. Right. And you know, I can't tell you, Jen, how many times, um, which is probably one of the reasons I'm so passionate about this, that I've been at IEP meetings with families and we bring up the concern of bullying mm -hmm. and teams stop us cold and say, I'm sorry, this is not an IEP issue. To which not only do I in that moment have said, oh, yes, it is, but we're here to tell you right now, oh, yes, it is. And the first thing that you really have to do is understand that if your child is vulnerable mm -hmm. to being bullied, you have to identify what is the skill deficit area. Right. Because you have to build up that deficit area in order to help them navigate their way through That's a right. bullying situation. Right. So it may be, let me start sort of at, the, at the, the, the ground level, it may be as elementary as a child not being able to identify right. when they are being bullied. Right. So what does it look like to be isolated? What does it look like to be shunned? Right. What does it look like when somebody's calling you a name but you may not think that you're not understanding what they're calling you right. to be an insult. Right. And many of many of my clients are targeted and they may not even understand that they're being right. targeted. And sometimes it's the other adults in the school or the parents when the, they're being told a story by the child later that they realize the kid was being teased, but the kid didn't realize they were being teased. Exactly. And, you know, a practical tip that a, a friend of mine once suggested to her child who was being targeted without his realizing it was the kid was being asked to do things that were getting him in trouble right. and a lot. And I thought this was a great tip that she gave him, just a practical tip. She said, you know what, if somebody if somebody asks you to do something, you ask them to do it first. And if they don't do it, they're probably teasing you. And I thought that's a great strategy. Right. Now, that's a, easily something that you could put right. into an IEP right. as a strategy that that student would be taught. It's going to work all, no matter what the circumstance is, right. it's going to work every time. It, it's a good tool, right? right? But absolutely. So the point is here that we now have to be detectives. Mm -hmm. And we have to figure out what skills is the child missing? Right. Are they social skill deficits? Is it a, a matter of executive functioning where they're making poor decisions? Mm -hmm. They're uh, jumping to conclusions? It could or, be everything from a, an example being daily living skills is an area that many right. IEPs focus on and that those are those skills that one needs to groom oneself and to be able right. to be hopefully independent in, in your day-to-day -day life. Daily right. living skills as it sounds, right? right? And so I've seen a number of cases and have been involved in a number of cases where a student is being targeted because of a hygiene issue, okay? Mm -hmm. And right. Julie and I I always want to be cautious when we give these tips that we're not in any way saying blame the victim. In fact, what we're saying mm -hmm. is, is there something about this child's disability that is making them more vulnerable? And if right. so, how do we support that disability in a way that right. gives the students right. skills? Right. So if, if hygiene is an issue for the student, are we really addressing properly those daily living skills through the IEP? Does this student need more support in that area? Right. So that may mean that you need further evaluation. Mm -hmm. Do you need to do a speech and language evaluation that perhaps focuses on the pragmatics of language, how we use our language, right. how we understand our language. Do we understand facial cues, you know, hand movements like right. I'm doing now, and what does that mean? Um, might it be that you have to have, um, like you said, an evaluation on adaptive behaviors, right. um, which is, or, or, or adaptive daily living mm -hmm. skills? So the team can sit down and say, where can we further evaluate to perhaps get to the bottom of why this child is being so vulnerable? Right. And more importantly, once you've done that, that, now you're able to develop IEP goals right. that absolutely target those deficit areas. Right. So it's very, it's actually easier than it sounds. And, and very often we get this sort of negative reaction when we bring it up. Right. But then once you start putting your heads together, there are really good, easy ways to incorporate some of these supports into a child's IEP. And, and you develop those goals and right. objectives and you say, okay, we want this child to learn how to self-advocate. We're going to give this child tools to know what are appropriate boundaries and social relationships. Once right. you start thinking about it, it's actually easier than it sounds. Right.